Hi guys! This is your Tita in China and today we're back with a new travel video. I recently went on a one-month journey around Southeast Asia and I went to Vietnam, Laos, Bangkok, and Cambodia. In my videos, I'm going to give you some travel tips and some information about the places that are popular in those countries. Before we go on with the actual video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell button so you know the next time that your Tita in China will upload a new video. And my social media links are also down below. So okay, let's go to Bangkok! Bangkok is a great place to visit if you want to experience traditional and modern life because here in Bangkok they have so many temples, so many historical sites that they have and they also have the comforts of modern life. Malls, shopping, cheap massages, spa escapes and all of that. And of course, they have great, great food. So delicious, so fresh. It's really a great city to have fun. So for the traditional side of Bangkok, you have the temples and this one here is the Temple of the Golden Buddha. Because this is a sacred temple and it's not just a temple for display, you need to remove your shoes when you enter. And you can see here the lovely golden Buddha. It's actually really made of gold. And it was accidentally discovered inside a cement Buddha. And they thought that the reason why they put the cement over the golden Buddha was to protect it from looters. And because of that valiant effort to preserve their culture, the Golden Buddha is here right now for everyone to see and enjoy. Apart from having to remove your shoes when you enter this temple, you also need to observe a dress code. And that means there's no shorts, no skirts, and also no sleeveless tops. When you go to the temple, you will see that there are a lot of people there who are praying, making offerings, and this is because it's an active temple. So please exercise a lot of respect when you visit these places. Don't make a lot of noise and if you have to take photos and you are allowed to take photos or videos, then be very mindful and considerate of the people who are there. This is the Reclining Buddha Temple and here you can see a 46 meter long Buddha that is reclining or is lying down. Again, you need to remove your shoes while you're in here and be considerate to the people who are praying or making offerings inside the temple. I love how the feet of the Buddha is decorated by Mother of Pearl illustrations. And these are all Buddhist illustrations. Around the reclining Buddha temple, you will see several chedis or stupas. And these are really, really tall. And they usually house the remains of the royal family or of high-ranking monks. The details on these stupas are unbelievable. They are all made of ceramic pottery and tiles. And you can really see that they put in a lot of effort and a lot of hard work into building these things. Around the temple, you will see four different chapels and almost 400 gilded Buddha statues. This is the marble temple. And the whole thing is made of exquisite Carrara marble. As usual, you have to remove your shoes when you go inside. If there is only one place that you can go to in your itinerary in Bangkok, it has to be the Grand Palace. This was built in 1782 and for more than 100 years, the King of Thailand lived here. Inside the Grand Palace is the Temple of the Emerald Buddha and it is considered to be one of the most important temples in all of Thailand. Upon seeing the intricate details, the glass pieces, the ceramic pieces, I can 
see why the pod is the Grand Palace. It really is a grand and splendid place. This is the Royal Reception Hall and they use this for state events. If you want even more traditional Thai culture, check out Ayutthaya. If you're going to take a group tour to Ayutthaya, most likely you're going to stop over at the Summer Palace. This is where the royal family used to spend their summers. Now this is Ayutthaya. Before the capital of Thailand was moved to Bangkok, this served as the capital of the country. But after a war with the Burmese in the late 1700s, Ayutthaya fell and they had to move the capital to Bangkok. This is the famous Buddha head in fig roots. These structures were built in the 1300s and Thailand is working hard to preserve it as part of their unique cultural heritage. These three large stupas are considered to be the holiest places here in Ayutthaya. I've mentioned several times in the video that these places are sacred places and they're very holy. So aside from the dress code, make sure that you behave properly. When you take pictures, make sure that your poses are appropriate. There is a proper time and place for slaying those poses, but sacred sites and holy places are not one of those. Travel time from Bangkok to Ayutthaya is 2-3 to three hours, and looking around will take another couple of hours. Visiting the floating market is something that I would recommend if it's your first time in Bangkok. It's actually a practical place to visit if you're planning to go and see elephants as well. But really, otherwise, I don't recommend going to the floating market. I just feel like the whole day that you're going to spend on the floating market is just better spent doing something else. If you want to have like the river experience, you can take a water taxi and it's also on the river. You can take a cruise, a dinner cruise on the river. And those are just much better experiences. Now you can't go to Thailand without trying the food. This place is the most famous Pad Thai restaurant and I mean look at this line. It is a line that goes on forever. On the day that we went there, we actually had to wait about an hour and a half to finally get a seat. It's very worth it though. Street food is a big deal here. I love the durian, I love the fruit that they have. And you can easily tell if the place is good if there are a lot of people queuing up for it. Now this place serves a chicken omelette and it has one Michelin star. But my favorite eating spots are actually like the hawker markets. They're just your normal wet market but there's a place there where you can sit down and order some food. My advice when eating in Thailand, 
go for the street food and have an adventurous spirit. One new thing I tried was a cooking school and I really had so much fun. On the day I enrolled, we learned how to make pad thai, son tam, which is the papaya salad, and red curry. So for this cooking school, they demonstrate it to you first and then it's your turn to do it by yourself. I may or may not have gotten a bit too Thailand has a very relaxed adult entertainment industry. So places like Soy Nana have topless bars, ladyboy bars, and it can actually be really good fun if you are into that thing. I obviously just went here for research purposes. I love going to Thailand, you know, whatever you're looking for, food, entertainment of all sorts. So here are some of my Tita tips. Tip number one, stay connected. I think staying connected is very important, not only because you know it's always cool to post your adventures real time and to contact your family, but for me, it's always important that you have a working cell phone, a working SIM card in your cell phone because you can check the Maps app and to check where you're going if you're going the right way. There are SIM cards that are data only and some are for calls and texts and data. I suggest getting the data only, that's what I often use and that's really all I need. After all, if you're going on a tour, for example, usually they will have you know, WhatsApp, Viber, or WeChat and you can contact them there. Tip number two, the exchange rate between peso to bat is really, really bad. I suggest that you change them into dollar first in Manila and then exchange a dollar to bat. Or you can just use your ATM card and withdraw money directly from an ATM in Bangkok. The only thing is you might need to call your bank and tell them that you are traveling and you will be using your ATM at a different country so that they will unlock that for you. Tip number three, take advantage of group tours. It will really benefit you if you're going to take a group tour because a lot of these places are not readily accessible by bus or train and it's just simply more convenient if they pick you up at the hotel and drop you off at the same place. Lastly, tip number four, the Grab app works very well in Bangkok so you can book either a taxi, a car, even a bike or a tuk-tuk in Bangkok. And also you can use your credit card to pay in the Grab app. So that means you don't need to have small change or small bills on you all the time. So that's it for our Bangkok video guys. I hope that you liked this video and that you found it helpful. And if you did, please like this video and share it to your friends who are also thinking about going to Bangkok. Thank you for watching guys. See you next time. Bye! Shatsujian!